Hey YouTube, David Richter Scale Studios here. I am starting a new project. Uh, welcome to part one and introduction of the Pain Boy is in. Uh, you may have seen these models before from an old video where I am building a uh, display piece for the Pain Boy office, and I haven't been working on that. I actually, make some changes to it. But I decided to work, work on these guys and get them done. Got some inspiration. Uh, last Sunday, I was at Get Ready Skate Games in Sacramento. And Caleb Wissenbeck, a uh, well-known competitive painter, uh, taking the time to uh, do a small class for us there. And um, I've bought a lot of DVDs in the past, but having a live teacher that's experienced like that, you can question and see his technique, especially when you can question someone. You look at a DVD, you can look at it over and over again, but there's something that you just don't grasp. And he's a very good teacher, was able to explain it to me and um, hopefully make me a better painter. I think definitely will. So uh, I am just working on these guys. You can see the base colors on the skin are done on both of them basically. I've been kind of playing around with shading and uh, blending. Um, I am using, let's see, I'll pull these out of frame real quick. These are the colors I am using. Let's see if it's in frame. So we got pine green as the shade, uh, leaf green as the base coat, and pale green as the um, highlight. And we will be incorporating probably blacks and whites into those two and other colors to uh, make those pop. Uh, the uh, mask and the cap on the Pain Boy himself, I'm doing in a mint green. I kind of want a old school kind of like OR uh, scrub color. And I'll be uh, using blacks and whites with that to shade it and highlight it. And then the bandages, he's got bandages on one leg and then the uh, garage covered with them from head to toe. We're going to be doing uh, this triad, um, leather white base, a ghost white shade, and the linen white uh, highlight. So um, those will be fun to work with and we'll probably incorporate probably some browns and some warmer colors into that. So let's bring these guys back in frame here. Let's see if I can bring them in close. And I just show you kind of playing around. Um, let's see if I can take this real quick and not lose it. There's my wet palette. There's my black and white, big blobs of that to, for shading and highlighting. So I can use that kind of well for that. There's the mint green. There's my um, skin triad. And there's the bandage triad I just laid out and haven't used yet. So I'm going back in here. He's hopefully in focus for you guys. I'm using a. Um, Series 7 number one, uh, not the miniatures, the regular one. And just kind of playing around with his skin right now. And it's just like looking at his shoulder, and it kind of looks like the, uh, it's not really blended that well. So I was going to just go in there with a little bit of a light thin too. Also, I'll show you another thing about my wet palette. This is a standard, uh, it's called Stay Wet Palette. You get these at Michael's. And probably any art supply store in the world. I, I think this is probably a real uh, common item. I cut the sponge. I've been watching people, uh, especially Caleb. He has a different palette, but uh, basically the same technique. Um, I cut the sponge about an inch too small all the way around. So you're, number one, you're able to see how much moisture you have in that palette. You don't want the water going above the sponge, but you want to make sure it's a nice reservoir of water there that it's feeding from to keep your paint wet through that uh, standard um, parchment paper you buy at a grocery store. Um, I've been taking to a bandsaw cut in thirds, so it's basically I think about five inches wide and then maybe six or seven inches long. So you have a nice uh, thing to work with. You can make it as big as you want, but when you're dealing with miniatures, you don't need a lot of paint. And also another thing with this trough, you want to moisten your paint a little bit to make a wash or a glaze. You just dip your br uh, brush in that little. Uh, um, moat and then you have your water supply right there you don't have to go into your clean uh your brush water at all so that's kind of a, a nice thing a, a tip maybe you guys can use so i'm dipping into the uh, highlight color right now and actually really really thinning it out i'm going to show you my brush you can't see any paint on there but there's plenty and let's see let's go in here bring a good hopefully good focus I'm going to kind of then start pulling the color back up into the highlight. You see that blend is working so much better. 
And then I'm gonna probably go in around the back side of the shoulder and take some of the um, base color and really thin again, but not as thin. Let's see if I can get into there. You guys can see that. Because it's got too much of that highlight going all the way around. So we're going to pull the shadows down. Maybe go in here a little bit. And just pull. Well, it's not really a shadow. This is the base color, but going into a shadow. This is a nice little blend right there. Looks a little bit better. And I'm going to go into the uh, the actual shadow color, the pine green, and uh, make make it basically glaze, but really get this on the tip of the brush. Maybe a little more higher consistency than that. And I want to make sure there's a kind of a you know right where it goes into the shirt in there. Oops, there's a paint bottle. I'm just kind of line that in there. Let's have a nice clean line. I'm not sure what I'm doing in the shirt yet. I might bring the mint green or change it up a little bit. And you can see how that mint green goes against the skin. Looks pretty nice. And we'll do some blood splatters on that later on. That'll be another part. Uh, probably when we get into weathering. Let's just try to get all the base colors down. Um, probably should have got all the base colors down, but I just kind of want to get into the skin and start blending it a little bit more. And like you can see, like an area right there. I'm gonna wash my brush. We have this very bright bicep, and this is very dark right here. So we want to lighten that up a little bit. So let's take a little bit of our base color, and a little bit of our uh, highlight, really small amount. And we have the crook of the elbow there, but we have this little bit of light would be hitting here. Add a little more interest to this area. And see how that just brightens it up right away. Just adds, you know, a little more effect. And we don't know the sun's not going to be going down there, but just and just pulling the color back up. And there you go. So not too badly blended. Uh, it's going to be fun to work on his eyes. He has a really, really just evil look to him compared to you know orcs are you know nasty anyways, but he's got just like a very vicious kind of look to them and work on those eyes. Um, we can highlight a little bit of his uh, chin. We'll take some of that uh, highlight and base mix and go along this little area here. And it's kind of bumpy so I just kind of go with the contours. And we can bring some of that color up there. Then, as we still have it a little bit wet, go into the straight highlight. Let's see that's a little I think that's a little dark too, actually. So we got straight highlight coming in. As you can see, there's there was a lot of paint on the brush. And just kind of find those little uh, divots where it's kind of like his lip color. And probably later on, I'm going to go in with some other colors too to bring, you know, make some uh, flesh tones and some reds uh, to mix in with this, just to give it like kind of like a lip. It's like going in the interior of his mouth from his exterior skin. This is kind of show you what I do with highlighting. And I kind of brighten it up a little bit. And then you can take the highlight over the eyebrows. So I just wanted to give everyone a quick update on what I'm doing and a quick introduction to this uh, should be kind of fun. Uh, I've wasted almost 10 minutes. So um, thank you for joining me and we'll see you in the next part. 
and uh, thanks again.